Okay, so this is goodbye 2017 Kansas and it's starting already. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Um yeah well it starts with some with some server lag. It's okay. It's alright. Okay. Hello. Hello. Welcome. <sighs> All right. Let's read the problems. So there are eight problems today. Okay, let's go from the top. First problem is not much. This is how it works. Let's see. Okay. Switch to English so that you guys can read it. Mm. Okay, so probably the queue is large by this point. <coughs> Let's go to the next problem. Okay, so you have a like I have a maze and a string of commands, but it's but it's jumbled. You don't know which which character 
corresponds to each direction. Um, so you have to try and decode this string. Um, actually count the number of different mappings. But anyway. <coughs> Just try all mappings. And that's it. Okay. That's it. We have to check if we have actually arrived to the final destination. And we also, okay. That's strange. Mm. Is it any better here? Well, okay. Zero.
that's very strange. No, somehow I don't see it. Okay, let's try something. Well, suddenly. Four is not correct. Did I miss with something? Okay, so we have to. All right. That's better. Problems is hard. Yep. Uh, well, it 
it seems to work. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, the next problem is Okay. This is not too hard, I guess. So you slide some discs from 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 the very top, and you have to uh, the disc stops whenever it touches the 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 coordinate axis or another disk so basically <coughs> basically you consider all previous disks and then intersect the current disk with another disk and with some shrinking you may consider this as intersecting the vertical rate with a like a disk that's twice as large as it usually is okay uh, all right. Seems to me. Okay, let's try something.
Yeah, apparently there shouldn't be any problems with precision. Let's see. Let's see what that. Okay, seems good. All right. Okay, okay. Huh. All right. The sub sequence, okay. Okay. So we could do some dynamic programming, I guess, but the problem is that we can have a lot of A's before we even have the next B, so we can't exactly store that. Um, what we could do is treat that as something special. Yes. Special case. Yeah, so basically you append some A's and wait for like if we can if we assume that the next letter is B. So either in that case we have a K or less subsequences or we have more. In, in which case everything will stop once we obtain the new B and then, and then we can just uh, sum, sum something up I guess well right here we go
just one last formula basically Apparently.
one. Cool. Well, all right. Basically, was not a good version. Well, it seems to work. Okay, some numbers. Problem E. So basically, if you, uh, you have a set of sets and a good set uh, contains our set and it's also basically it follows from, from these conditions that there should be a partition into blocks 
of the of the of the indices. We can prioritize the indices into blocks, so that um, well, basically, a good set consists of all subsets of these partitions. Um, apparently, okay. So yeah, it shouldn't be that hard. So, um, we have to count the number of ways to partite a set into mm -hmm. So we have something like We can ignore that basically. Hmm, only fifteen strings. Let me see that. Let me see that. Yep, four makes sense. Basically, we have to count the number of distinct columns, and for each type of column, how many of them? Okay. So we have um, columns. Here and I hope it works. 
this case and it does okay so now I'm fairly certain that sh this should work mm, let's check the constraints here well well I think that should be fine that should be fine okay Not sure what, why the constraints are so low. Okay. Looks good. Um, so, three problems to go. Let's see if there are any other problems in this way. Okay. Interesting. Right. Oh, I see now. Okay. So the answer can actually be larger in these strings. Huh? I'm not sure why why we have the answer like that uh, if we could just connect everything in order let's see if we have any dates mm. okay I I don't actually understand what you're allowed to do in this problem but apparently someone does okay um let's try and figure it out oh okay so Apparently, if you remove a point because you don't see it, and you also remove all edges. Yeah, that, I think that makes sense. Okay. So... There are no... Okay. Assume that there are no, say, red points. Uh, then one of the guys only wants to make green points connected, and obviously the way to do that is to just connect them in order. And the other guy wants to connect everything else. So on each segment, we want to kind of erase the longest distance between them because. Um, yeah, because that's what we did. Um, Alright, so now everything is present. Is there any difference? Is there any difference? I am not quite sure. Okay.
So is it true that we have to connect all green points in order? Hmm. Yeah. If you don't connect them. Okay, so we need some observations here. <coughs> Do we need any cycles in the graph? Um, why would we need cycles? Do we actually need any cycle? Okay. So, if we have a red point and a blue point, then it doesn't make sense to connect them because this edge won't work in any of the cases. So, we only can connect greens with everything and reds with reds mm. well can we make things simpler i guess i guess Okay, so everything to the left of the first green is kind of easy. And the question is what happens between two consecutive greens? And we have that in the symbol here. So we have some reds and we have some blues. So do we have to connect? All of them. Well, in this case, we kind of connect one to four, so that is an option, I guess. And the other option is to just use if we don't do that, then we have to connect everything. So, I guess these are the only two options. Okay. Well. Do I want to stress test that? Um, do I? Do I really? Well, okay. Probably not. separate cases here I guess so Thank you. 
kind of do this, the same thing for the prefix and the suffix. I just copy paste something because, well, why not? <coughs> Each pair we do one of the two things. This is one of the cases where we have kind of like cycle. And the other case is when we have these, but oh, that should be the largest distance, I guess. We go 42 minus 10 minus 9. Did I mess up something? So apparently, I mess up something here. Well, this is not right. So 
12, okay, it's 27 minus a minus 7, all right. Can we have this this case at all with yeah apparently let's see something like so we have one D D B three R B five R six B seven R B nine R and then ten G Apparently the answer is 18. Okay. Let's check that um, things are alright with the border cases. Uh, so the answer should be something like 6. Okay. And if we do this, then the answer is six okay. and here the answer is currently and okay no thank you no don't compile that okay. well well this looks okay to me That's not very good. Let's see here. So we don't have to sort anything, which is good. And hmm, are there any cases that I've missed? I'm not sure about it. So this case is fine, I think. Apparently it should be fine. Okay, this case. So everything to the left of the first green. Can we cheat there somehow? Apparently we shouldn't. Well, assume that there is an edge that crosses the green. And well, mm, that shouldn't work. Huh, that's good. <coughs> so I didn't check for that. Apparently, if there is something in the prefix that I, then if there is a color in the prefix that didn't occur, then something goes wrong. Huh. And also, there was another bug here. Check that everything's in order now. Something like R, R, G, G, B, F, B. Apparently, should be 14. Huh. 
that's nice. So you can, oh, sorry, 40. And here we have to go. Well, it's like plus two, I guess. Now it seems to be okay. Well, should have tried that on samples. Right. Okay, good. Well, not too bad up to this point. Well, now we have like an hour and a half for the last two problems. So we have to choose the correct of them. So the last problem is a uh, I'm not sure what it is. Okay, so this is very short. Let's let's see. Okay, <clears throat> so you have sum up all the numbers up to a very large threshold, except that each number is we take each number and sort its digits. So it seems like we should count a certain dynamic programming of like what is what does each particular digit impact on our answer. Okay. So, for example, if we have like th third digit from the from the back, what's its impact? Well, for each digit there, we have to count how many numbers can we have up to this threshold. That well. So we can go over digits. Okay, so we choose each digit. Mm. And then we count something like how many digits are greater and how many digits are exactly this value. So this is something like 700 to the, to, to the cube. Um, well, we can't exactly do that, I think. Maybe there is a better way. Maybe there, there is a better way. Well, with this approach, we can do this once, apparently. Okay. So we kind of, for each, for each number, we will account for this segment of equal digits. Okay. Maybe it will still be fast. Maybe, I guess. So what's the complexity here? We have to go ten times <coughs> ten times seven hundred to the cube, but probably with some if we skip some unreachable states that still should be fine. Um yeah, let's try this. This looks fine to me. So the input is only one number. Cool. And then we have to count some DP. 
copy of how many digits have we processed from the very start uh, how many digits less than our digit do we have and also um, let's put it to large right yep but we can probably deal with only two Two layers of this basic programming and also a flag that our that our number is strictly less than yeah okay. so we have to go over all digits first and creature number will do everything independently is still not strictly less and we don't have any digit basically okay so now we try now we go over all digits we try all values of flanks we also well it shouldn't be larger than right plus one and this shouldn't be larger than i times j. Okay, well, let's do something very small here. Apparently, this will be Alright. Alright, so. Now we well um, here I will I'm just going to try all values of next digit but it may be very slow um, maybe I'll have to optimize it later. This is not exactly very effective, but I think that should be fine. Then, um, now the only thing to do is to
think that should be fine, uh, except that we have to do basically the same as we did before. I'm kind of lazy to copy paste that. with these properties are there and we only have to I here. Maybe it should be here. Go away. Alright, we should slightly better. Slightly better. Yeah, seems fine. Um assuming that we do not have any kind of overflow, but apparently in dynamics we don't have that. And here, 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 we don't seem to have that. Okay, so now we only have to try like, if it works. Okay, um, expected that works a bit too slow a bit too slow alright seems bad let's see if it's like too bad so for a hundred okay so we probably have to get rid of this Ten here. Right. Well, can we get rid of the other ten? In the hmm. Not sure. Estimate for 300, it's three seconds, and we have to do within two seconds. Okay, Okay, let's see if we can get rid of this.
and this um, our digit and also the digit of our number Not sure it will be enough. stuff Okay, we don't exactly need the, the dynamics, I guess, because we can, yeah, I think so. Well, let's see, this should be a, bit, a little bit faster. I guess so. Yeah, we don't exactly need that thing. Um, let's see. Uh, so. Okay, let's try something else. So we don't need this, we only need this stuff and also recomputed degrees or something, I guess. So we don't need much of that anymore. Bye bye. So What we do now is basically
So currently something like this. Currently we don't need for this for anything else. This let's try this on this real quick. Is it any faster now? This is what? Well, still a bit too slow. And 
Apparently we can speed up something here. So, actually, um, most of this part does only depend on S and D, right? And here, yep, so this one we can speed up. Pretty good. Um, let's see now. Um, so this will still take um, cubic time for each S. We do this and lots of stuff. Well, let's see how it goes. So it's even slower now. Well, it doesn't seem to work at all, right? That's because... Okay, and it doesn't work. That's cool, huh? Am I missing something?
So apparently this is something very easy to compute, I guess. Let's see now. Patterns. Cool. And here <coughs> we have pretty much the same thing, except that A is not present. So it should be this. Seems to work.
apparently it's true. And so we can just go on and do this. Well, oh, I forgot a key here, I guess. <coughs> was probably a bit too long, but that's the right problem. Okay. Um, so basically what happened here is uh, in order to compute the answer fast you had to um, basically try Divide all numbers into what is the matching prefix with the original number, and then all the other. Well, yes. Yeah, so, so the next digit should be smaller, and then everything else is basically every digit you want from zero to nine. <coughs> and then we can sum up over how many digits in the free part are larger than digit D and equal to the digit D and that gives us uh, enough information to obtain what is the segment of the chosen digit um, like where does it start and end and so you do that and after you um, write some formulas you'll arrive at something like this basically um, and this can be um, this can be compressed to just just this, just some something to the power of something, because of um, multinomial theorem. Cool. Um, well, that was unexpected, I guess. All right. So let's see the last problem is apparently very hard. I will still try to solve it, um, or at least understand it. And uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of hacking going on. Let's just see what happens in my room here. So someone ha is hacking A, someone is hacking B. Mm. Uh, let's see, I'll just assess if 
if it's possible to do something here. So basically only A, B and C are submitted a lot and it shouldn't look at any other problems. Mm. Well, it doesn't seem like hacking will be like very useful. So just for the hell of it, I'm just going to try and solve this problem. So what this seems to seem to say is that well it's very obscure. Um, so basically between any pair of nodes there is a path in either in one of directions, at least one of directions. Uh, okay. Well, um, this is something, okay, well, okay, so let's see now, we have a matrix where each letter says us if there is if there are paths between corresponding vertices in both directions. Um, is it symmetrical? Is it? Should it be symmetrical? Yeah, never mind, okay. Uh, so, or that there is a path in at least one of the directions, which actually does not give us any information. Or there is a path only in exactly one direction between these two. Um, yes, it's symmetric. So you have to find what's the minimum number of edges. And well, okay, let's see. Um, so basically, since we have a path between any pair of yes, between any pair of vertices in at least one direction, then the condensation of this graph should be a tournament, so that there are like uh, several strongly connected components, and well, there is a like a path that goes through all the all of them. Um, so our information here is that either the vertices lie in the same connected component, or do they lie in distinct connected components, or we don't know anything. Okay. So. We can construct a graph here, and there are like, well, there will be some vertices that should be together. Um, yeah, okay, and the answer, okay, let's see. The answer here is, well, Thank you. 
Yes, so the answer is n minus 1 plus the number of strongly connected, connected components that have at least two vertices. So we have to minimize this number. Okay. Huh. <clears throat> so we have to group all the connected components as much as possible. And what exactly is wrong with? Well, first of all, we can construct like preliminary components, and some of them should be like are forbidden to go together. And for some pairs, we don't know them. <clears throat> so we have to basically um, split our graph of connected components into independent sets. Seems to be independent sets. So that the number is minimized. How many time do I have? Well. Hmm. Well, what's wrong with what's wrong with? Mm -hmm. So, assuming that we somehow treat the single connected components separately, that doesn't seem too hard. Um, basically, if we have some single vertex components then it doesn't make sense to add them into anything. Okay, so here goes nothing basically. Um, Even though, well, if there are like 23 vertices and any graph, how do we actually find this? Um, well, we can do that in 3 to the 23, but that's too large. Can we go with the bells number? So this is the same thing as to cover independence and not it's not a lot better.
maybe a convolution can do. Let's see now. No, probably, probably not. Hmm. Okay, let me think about that for a moment. Um, Hope I will, I will be able to get it. Huh? Camera, camera. Can you? Thank you. Okay, so camera, 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 camera. Um, well, I will do it with the, without the camera, right? So we can do with thank you. With, Yep. Come on, 
nine plus. Um, so the idea is to, instead of trying to enlarge our answer in with all independent sets, we can. Uh, we can go only with maximal independent sets. <laughs> so it's like 47 over 3 is 15 basically. Um, well, that's still large, I guess. Oh no, we only have 2023. So this is the maximum the maximal number of our independent sets. Um, that's still a bit too large. I guess that's still large. Um, let's see now. Probably we can still do something about that. Uh, okay, well, I will write something. It's not guaranteed to pass. Anyway, we still have to first construct the graph. So this is A, and this means that Should we care about the sizes? Apparently we do. Um,
have to find all maximal clicks and Something like this, I guess. I'm not sure if this will work, but anyway. something. 
So here, the answer should be 5. It's 4 for some reason. One, two, and three are independent sets. That's not very good. Did I mess up? Well, oh, okay, I see. So something wrong here. Sure, we should have minus one. Okay, E. I don't have a minus one here. Let's think.
Oh, anyway, it's time to submit now. Like I said, I'm not sure if this will pass, but the time limit here is five seconds. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully this will work. Um, so what I did here is basically I <coughs> got a, I got a standard dynamic programming. What is the smallest number of independent sets that can cover the whole graph that I obtained from the initial initial conditions and then I optimize something I only leave the maximal clicks the maximal well maximal independence that's okay and that still can be too large but I have something here that um, basically when I try to cover a certain a certain set then I only look at Yeah, basically, I'm trying to cover, if I've covered something, that I only look at the maximal independent sets that cover the first uncovered vertex. And... <coughs> yeah, that's a slight optimization. I believe that can be made to fail. Oh, well. Um, hmm. Maybe I can do something, something here. Basically, out of um, out of vertices that we can choose to cover next, we choose the one that has a small as few. Well, uh, yeah, that's probably not going to be a, you know, it's not going to be a very good optimization that it won't make like, a lot of things better. Uh, it won't speed up in any significant way, I believe. So, yeah. I basically I will just hope it works. And oh. so apparently C is hackable. Let's let's look at that. Well, um, maybe in the last few minutes I'll just go and look at some submissions. See if I can hack them. Yeah, please, yes, please do that. Yes, please do use flash. Thank you. Okay. 
Let's look at the precision here. Mm, looks good to me. Of the code. Nah. So, so, code please, code please. Thank you. Yep, you should use in here. And well, looks good, I think. Okay, cool. Oh, some long doubles here. <coughs> and yeah. Mm. That looks a bit fishy, but I probably will not be able to hang that, sadly. Because it's just too finicky to construct a test when you... Well, when you compare basically doubles, this here is double, and you compare it with zero just with hard comparison. And, well... Here you've got something else. So apparently this works. I'm not, I'm not sure if it will pass. Maybe in some situations. Um, okay. So here are some checks. Well, we have in here. Let me just check something real quick. You have all the numbers up to a thousand, so you can't overflow here. And, well, yep. Hmm, still wonder if... This works. Oh, never mind. So, yeah, here you go. That was the goodbye contest of 2017. This was an AK performance, I guess. It was slow at places, and I'm not sure if the last problem will pass, but I guess it's better than most of my performances lately. So, yeah, that's it. I hope you had fun um, watching this. I will try and upload a bit more frequently if I get the chance to. And, yeah. So, happy new year or upcoming year to everyone. And I'll see you. I'll see you later. Bye.